Good morning, gardening friends. Today is August 27th. It's about 7.15 in the morning. I've been up and about watering because it's been hot. Today is supposed to be another extremely hot day. Yesterday at, I registered about 105 degrees. Uh, oh, hummingbird. And uh, in any event, I've been out in the yard doing a little bit of work earlier this week. Just mostly keeping things alive, watering. So I soak the front yard really well. It takes me about an hour. So I did that early this morning. Well, prior to doing this video. I don't have my fountains on today. I had to take my fountain out of that boiling pot. Because of the extreme heat and the lack of rain, uh, I get a lot of animals in at night, and we've kind of reached a uh, truce. <laughs> I do feel bad for them because there is no water around for them to get into, and they kept getting into that uh, tub there and, and knocking my fountain out, actually chewing on it, which is rather annoying. But they didn't do any other damage in the backyard, so I figured, well, it is so hot, I'm not going to begrudge them getting some water. Here you can see the heat seems to take in its toll on this particular papyrus, although it has one new shoot at the base. Now the other one, three foot away, is doing extremely well. Go figure. Roses have been burned to a crisp, <laughs> which is not unusual, I'd expect that. Banana trees are still very lush. Winds are starting to take the toll on some of them. They, they break up in the wind. This was a failed attempt at rooting mint, although I haven't given up on it yet. I had sprouted these in water and put them out and then watched in horror as a house wren went and picked all the green leaves. <laughs> so mint is kind of hard to kill, so I'm thinking it'll probably come back. Well, the exciting news, although on a very small scale, is one of my new toad lilies is in bloom, and it's a yellow one. Yay! <laughs> it's not very spectacular, but next year, considering it was just a bare root about six inches long when I got it, I think, I, yeah, I got it from Walmart. I got a package of three assorted colors. I have the purple, so I'm very pleased that that one's yellow. It, of course, will get bigger next year. And this other one that I got as well has flower pods or, or heads on them. I've noticed, I don't know because of the heat or not, but there's a lot of moths around in the undergrowth here. Don't know why, it just is. I did have Mr. Toad come to visit. I hadn't really ever seen toads in the backyard before, but I saw him up on the deck earlier this week, and I felt bad for him, so I grabbed some water out of one of the baths out of the front, on the deck and put it in a little saucer, and then picked him up and put him inside the saucer, and he promptly jumped as fast as he could out. <laughs> And I put my finger in the water and found out it was warm to the touch. So I guess he thought I was trying to make toad soup. But So he disappeared. And then I saw him the next day hopping around. I guess he likes the low, the, the, the bugs in the undergrowth. Because he likes to walk around the monkey grass. Here you can see what's left of the Spanish moss. It seems to have died in the back of this pindo palm and seems to prefer the front. So that's okay. As long as I have a clump somewhere, I'll be happy.
again, not much has been going on here other than just trying to keep things alive. I did go ahead and plant that fern in the ground. And I don't know if you can see, but to the left of that fern is the ladyfinger palm that I planted last year. It still has one sprout that is living. So I figured I'd tuck it in amongst the fern. That fern will spread. So it's easy to keep in line. It's just a matter of letting it spread for a while. I watered this garden, the backyard here last night. So it still looks rather lush. Nothing much is wilted, but you can see the heat is taking a toll, burning some of the plants. Definitely got the Aspidistra, but that was kind of the shock in taking out the Loquat here when it died. This angel's trumpet, although not in bloom right now, has apparently taken root because even in the hottest part of the day, it doesn't wilt. The bottle brush is loving it. It hasn't bloomed yet this year and probably won't, but it is thickening out nicely. Back in here, again, just trying to keep things alive. I am very pleased with this Ozark plum because it's basically in one year grown as tall as the Meyer lemon was. These bananas need a little trimming back. They're not going to grow much taller than this one. There you can see I've got some of my Encore azaleas blooming. And apparently the heat is taking its toll on this knockout rose. The other one's doing okay up in that area, but this one is definitely browning off. It still has one green shoot. I've been watering it a little extra heavy. And you'll also notice the heat is also taking a toll on my monkey grass. The monkey grass that's exposed to the sun during the afternoon is burning. It won't kill it. Well, you can see it burns at the top, but the base of it shades the rest of it. So you really can't kill that stuff. But unfortunately, that brown will stay with it. It doesn't lose its old leaves. So probably next spring I'll have to trim those spots back with hedge trimmers. It's still rather pleasant out here. I think it's only in the mid 80s right now. This has done spectacularly well, the Bougainvillea. Of course, I just bought that last week. But this one is exposed to full sun and it has really flowered out nicely or bloomed out nicely. Here's where my other original toad lilies are. And this week I am definitely going to free them up, clean them out a little bit. Not clean them out, but clean the stuff out around them. Heat is taking its toll on my coxcombs. I'm thinking I may go ahead and get some more marigolds to put there. Marigolds are kind of a fall thing. Either marigolds or snapdragons. Here all is well. Of course that looks terrible, but the birds are doing that. And I've had a bad experience this year with these plants <laughs> that I can't think of the name right now. Uh, but I bought them over a month ago and they have yet to bloom lantana i bought four of them i have two in the front yard in pots and these two they're a beautiful bright yellow lantana and have yet to see a single blossom on any of the plants although they threaten they send up little like flower pods this bougainvillea is is in the shade a little more but it's still looking well
I finally figured out how to stop these plants from wilting. What I wound up doing is I put them in little plastic bags. So that way when I water them, it traps the water in them. And so they stay moist longer. You can see the neighbor's Rose of Sharon blooming nicely. This coleus was really a success this year, but it is bothersome. You have to water that every day in this heat. Here's some ivy that succumbed to the heat. It wasn't from lack of water because I do water these every other day. I kind of stretch or one day to the backyard, one day to the front yard. Of course, it could be from lack of water. Maybe I'm not giving it enough water, but I'm not about to water the ivy every day. <laughs> Up here, you can see my Australian tree fern got a little burned. I'm leaving the burned foliage there because you'll notice the new ones that are coming out are lush and green. So I'm figuring the dead is probably shading some parts of the plant. So until this heat wave is over, I'm not going to clean the dead off of that plant. And as you can tell, my street is now open. Yay! <laughs> my potager is looking fine. Really not giving me much but okra. And here is proof that God does have a sense of humor. I planted kale mostly to fill the spots where the green beans were, string beans, and I was figuring maybe one or two would grow, and every one of those suckers caught, which is okay. I'll force myself to eat more kale this year. My four o'clocks are having a second wave of bloom. Here you can see the okra. I've given up on the okra. I'm absolutely sick of eating okra. But I guess it is good for you. <laughs> you can even see the heat has actually taken a toll on my lilies of the Nile, even though they originate in South Africa. This over 100 degree weather is taking a toll on them. It's not gonna kill them, but it did set them back a little. Bananas are doing well here, very thick. Back in here, I just finished watering everything here. Nothing really new to report over here, just this is shady enough from the trees and the shrub growth that it does maintain itself. These wandering dudes look a little beat up. It's because when I was watering this morning, that's the way the water hit them. So, oh, the squirrels are eating the bird feeder, or eating the bird seed in the bird feeder. I happened to find a new type of bird seed. I think I got it from Walmart. And I forgot the name of it, but I'm going to have to get more because it has a lot more sunflower seeds and peanuts and stuff in it. And the good thing for the squirrel's point of view is they like what they get versus some of the cheaper bird seed that I've got will have less of the uh, sunflower seeds in them. And what the squirrels will do is empty the entire feeder of everything else to get at the sunflower seeds. Kind of annoying because they can empty a feeder in a half a day. So I invested a little more and they leave enough for the birds to get at. Here this needle palm is liking its final location. Some of the ferns back here have gotten a little fried from being in the sun, but they'll come back. I did go ahead and stake up my cassia I didn't like the way it was growing because it was just growing straight up and had all these four sticks. And I didn't want to cut them back because I think I was tempted to cut them to about here and let them bush out. But the problem with that is 
I may be cutting off this year's flowers. So I thought, well, for this year, I'll just splay it out. And that way it takes up more space visually and should do well. My limelight hydrangea is looking a little battered, mainly because I have to get through here every day to water my bananas in the front. And I snapped the chunk leaning over the, the limelight. Well, let's take a quick look out by the street. It's going to be noisy because the traffic is back, but believe it or not, it's not that bad. It's certainly better than having the trucks idle for hours on end that are doing the construction here. I did find out what this thing is, in case anyone's wondering. That is so blind people will know where the sidewalk is. Although how they're going to get from there to here without tripping over all this other stuff is beyond me. But once when they get to that pad, they'll know that's where the sidewalk is. Here you can see the bananas I planted. And they're doing well. This is the one that's a cutting. Or a pup, I should say, off of the one in the front. So they're going to get nice and bushy. And of course the sod is being fried in the front, but it is what it is. I am going to work on this eventually and trim some of these azaleas back. Little by little, I'll work on this front piece. I never really spent money or a lot of time on the front of my property, this side, because I was always weary of the day when they would put in sidewalks or expand this road. So chances are now they're not going to expand the road since the sidewalk is in, so I can invest a little bit of money and time in this front yard. Interestingly enough, before other cars come, it never ceases to amaze me how they waste money around here, but they sodded that whole section one day last week, and by the end of the day, you can see where there's a section of curb that's been dug up. They dug a hole there, busted up the curb, put dirt all over the sod that they had just put down about an hour before, and then also at that end. <laughs> dug it up, and they're still playing with it, but they opened the street up nonetheless. And there you can see, I'm assuming the lady that put the sign there must have a contact with the city because about 10 minutes after this road was officially opened, that particular realtor was going around sticking signs in the ground. So reminded me a little bit of a vulture, but they have to make a living too. It's better than looking at a mud pit to look at a for sale sign, but you can see the green across the street and the trees are in, so it's getting there. At least my section is finished. And the marigolds, although I'm watering them every day, they seem to have caught. They're not wilting as much. These made it through the night because I water them. I sprinkle the water on them every morning, but I soak them good every other day. So the heat is taking its toll on everything. I've been working more inside the house been doing things that I've been putting off. Put some new curtains up. Little odds and ends, but that's inside stuff. You don't want to hear about that. <laughs> so that's it for this week. I hope you all will be staying cool and still remain hydrated. And hopefully this heat wave will be over pretty soon. That hurricane that's starting or the tropical storm in the Gulf will probably do some to cool us down some. We can use the water. Have a good day. Till next week.